Well, this is Belle Powley. <laughs> and Belle Powley uh, played my daughter, which I thought was rude, um, in, <laughs> in a play. I always think when I'm a cast as a mum that it's rude. <laughs> Even though you are one. I know. You're still slightly offended. Like, how dare you? I'm only 16. We did a play here, directed by uh, Nina Rain, and written by the wonderful April DeAngelis, called Jumpy, about a, a mother and daughter. The daughter's going completely off the rails, and the mother, her only daughter, her only child, is consequently thrown into a maelstrom of insecurity and terror because her daughter is... Nuts. <laughs> Nuts. It was the first time I'd worked here. We did a workshop of it, which was Belle um, wasn't invited to do because um, she wasn't quite old enough. <laughs> <laughs> I was 11. No. And I was 20. Um. And, um, and then we did... And then, yeah, that was my first time at the Royal Court and, I, and nothing has ever can compare. Oh, but, really? Nope. Um, it wasn't my first time at the Royal Court. <laughs> My first you ever play in the womb, was didn't here. You? <laughs> first ever play. I feel like the Royal Court is like my theatre parent. Um, <laughs> honestly, you gave I was birth to you. Yeah, basically, as an actor. How old were you? I was sixteen. I'd never done a play before. I'd never really seen that many plays except like you know Christmas Did you just time. Stumble I'd gone into to see a musical. By <laughs> basically, <laughs> I've no idea how it happened. Dominic Cook and Jeremy Aaron You're took for a, a real wee. risk. <laughs> Just popping in after a bit of Peter Jones for a wee <laughs> and then ended up on in a play. Yeah, yeah. basically. Um, yeah, they took a real risk. Me and another 16-year-old boy and a 9-year-old boy led Polly Stenham's Tusk Tusk. <laughs> None of us had ever done a play before. None of us were trained. Um, None of us knew what you were allowed to be paid, so yeah. you accepted what they offered. Yeah. <laughs> um, it was an amazing experience. I have seen plays here. I think it's a magnificent theatre. I have loved uh, uh, various different ones over the years. I, I, I particularly remember uh, Love, 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 mm -hmm. Mike Bartlett's play, and um, Upstairs, My Child, his, um, his Mike's play before that. Um, uh, uh, what else have I seen? Jerusalem. Did you see that here? Yeah, I loved it. Yeah. Did you see Constellations? Constellations. That was one of my yeah. favourite plays That was here. amazing. It was like the first play I've ever seen where the the set and the design and the direction were so vast, but the there was so much heart and like such a core to it. I remember being so an emotional wreck afterwards, really, but really struck by it. I think before that, I thought there were either big plays or little plays. I didn't realise you could kind of mix the two. <laughs> you said you weren't going to say anything intelligent. <laughs> she did quite well there, didn't you? Well, we're only tw 20 and 11, so, you know, <laughs> we can't so speak for the whole 60 can, years. Yeah, we can only speak for the importance of a third of that time, or a quarter, or a bit less than that. <laughs> um, I think that it's, a, it's an essential mouthpiece for uh, contemporary humanity. And if we don't have new writers expressing what it is to be alive now, in our current vocabulary, uh, then we are a, are a much poorer society. That of course it's wonderful to go and see revivals and to uh, to celebrate the the poets and the writers from um, British history. But unless we're hearing how people are experiencing what it is to be alive now in the written word and in the exchange of uh, the liveness of theatre, I think we're lost. I think also with Jumpy, I, it was my first ever play that had been directed by a woman and was... Uh, and written by a woman. Written by a woman and mainly a female company. It was about women and... It was feminism by stealth. Yeah. Because people came along and thought that they were going to get a, you know, a fantastic romp about uh, middle-aged women doing burlesque, <laughs> which it was. And I've, to this day, I've never, I've never found it more difficult to perform on a stage than every single night with Dune McKeith <laughs> in her in her fee foo foo fee fee and and her getting the thing caught up in her feathers. But I I very I was very clever in that scene because I suggested uh, wearing a huge jumper, 
with a big wide neck. So I just you, would just, just just put the jumper over my face. Whereas I just stood there openly <laughs> laughing. I can't get rid of that no. from my memory. Nor do I want to. I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> in hard times, that's what I think of. <laughs> and um, and us in the doing the scene at the beach where she's in a in an immodest uh, bikini, and then I have to take my top off. <laughs> wear the um, flesh-coloured swimming costume. <laughs> At which point she goes, Ah, mom, mom. <laughs> Mercifully, it only lasted about seven seconds. <laughs> I've never felt more exposed. Um, uh, but also, again, Dune was in the scene, so probably nobody was looking anyway. <laughs> So that's good, but it was. But what it, the play was looking at was what it was for a woman to uh, bring a child into the world and to let her go. And there were these fantastic audiences, which were very balanced. There were men and women, and also a, a generational a cross section. So you mm. had mothers and daughters coming along, and you could see. And talking to people afterwards, you know, the mothers would go, "Oh." That's what it's like for my daughter, and the and the daughters would go. Oh, that's what it's like oh, for I my mum. I feel mom. really bad now. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a real uh, dialogue across generations and across the sexes. If the Royal Court didn't exist, I wouldn't hold out much hope for us understanding who we are as a society in London now. I think this is an essential mouthpiece. How can I follow that? Okay, it was um, so heartfelt. I was literally going to be like, if the Royal Court... What was it, if the Royal Court didn't exist? If the Royal Court didn't exist. I, I don't wouldn't. think I'd be an actor. Okay, say that. Do the whole sentence. If the Royal Court didn't exist, I wouldn't be an actor. Are you hoping that they're going to employ you again? <laughs> yeah. Me too. This is my only hope. <laughs> <laughs> Let's pitch another show. A mother and a daughter. Or a grandmother and a mother. 